What's going on everybody? Gunner here. Uh, thanks for watching the quick and dirty one minute time tutorial of The Bug. Um, and this is kind of an extension of the, the Pheasant Rump Jason Taylor inspired Full Weight Chronicles series. And basically uh, I was out wade fishing, we're in a super severe drought. Um, and what's interesting about that is for like the first time in five years I've actually been able to sight fish in my river and see red horse and see channel cats and see smallmouth cruising and see smallmouth fry. Uh, and basically that's what this pattern is supposed to look like. Now, on uh, with water pressure on it, so in kind of a tight line swing or when stripping it, it's like a sick little smallmouth fry imitation. Like I'm talking one and a half, two inch smallmouth juveniles that are you know yearlings that hatch this spring basically. Um, it also looks like stickleback, it also looks like a little small days, a juvenile, basically any small forage fish that you're going to see in your river. Um, and the greatest thing about it is you only need a pheasant skin and some flashaboo dubbing. That's it, besides hook and eyes. Uh, and so it's a really simple fly, really simple techniques. Um, and if you want to see this fly fishing, if you want to see me catch, I don't know, seven or eight trophy smallmouth on it, uh, that day, for every trophy fish, I probably caught four, five, six, eight, ten inch fish as well. I mean, I probably put 30 fish in hand on this thing in an afternoon. It was lights out. Uh, you can check out this video right here because it was pretty sick. Um, I'm fishing this on a two weight and I can cast this 60 feet on a two weight, a six foot two weight. Like the thing is unbelievably castable, um, super fishy bug. So that's the one minute tutorial. I'm about to run through the long version. I'm going to show you guys all the techniques you need uh, and all of the material prep and everything so that you guys can make it through this bug and hopefully have it, you know, after a few practice sessions, but coming out uh, this clean and this durable and this consistent. So let's dive in and tie the bug, another full weight chronicle fly with nothing but a pheasant skin and a little bit of flash dubbing. Check it out. So the hook is uh, the NS-118, so the Nordic Salt. Uh, 118 which is a 4x long classic streamer hook from A-Rex. This is the size 6. This is like kind of the perfect proportions. Um, if you need a thicker wire, slightly wider gap hook, if you're fishing this uh, kind of in the coast or brackish water or sea trout or anything like that, uh, you can also use the Nordic Salt Deep and about a size 4. They're about the same shank length uh, and that'll get you a little bit thicker wire gauge for a little bit bigger fish if you need it. <coughs> The thread is six thousandths of an inch monofilament. The monofilament thread is the bee's knees. Nice, round, has a ton of bite to it on the feathers, works well in dubbing loops, uh, just unbelievably durable. And then with the super glue, it just welds, literally forms on top of itself. Uh, so it's kind of my favorite. <clears throat> The eyes that fit this hook the best also gets you a little bit of depth, allows you to dead drift it, allows you to fish it super slow on floating lines. Uh, we're going to fish medium stainless steel bead chain. You could fish large if you wanted a little bit more jig. You can also throw a split shot on your leader, no harm, no foul. Um, but yeah, the medium is kind of perfect for what I'm using it for. It also helps it just cast a little bit and make up for a little bit of that wind resistance. Now these are just kind of figure eight wraps, but I do half at a time so I do you know just cross wraps cross wraps cross wraps kind of loaded up and then you're going to go over the eye but under the hook and that is going to pull all of those cross wraps and just put a boatload of tension on them too much tension on them you can see I as soon as that snapped I put my finger on it so it couldn't unwind sucked my thread through my bobbin and relashed it all down. Of course when you're trying to sell someone on tying with monofilament it's not a great idea to break your thread on film but crap happens. Let your thread hang vertical so you have a reference point and then make sure your eyes are perfectly level and then just hit that with some CA plus and now that will weld. Now you can just take some feather uh, waste and just kind of rub that up in there, help absorb some of that. And a little bit too much came out there. You're good to go. Now you can see I put down a pretty good thread base. What you're going to want to do, make sure that's nice and rough, has a lot of grip to it. Now when you come in with your pheasant skin, you're going to find kind of, if you look at the wing of the bird, where this, you know, this is your back, this is your rump, 
right under this stuff at the corners in the back, you're going to find a ton of insulative, just super high premium marabou stuff. And that's what you want. You want some premium marabou for this tail. Not this short little stuff that they use for the eggs, but this kind of long fibered stuff. So just give me a sec to select some like this. This one literally has like a hundred pieces of prime marabou right there. It's just disgusting. Now, the whole thing of this fly that's pretty cool is we're going to use all of the waste from our shafts. So don't throw your shafts away. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to print all these to the length I want. We're going to do, because this is kind of a, a bait fish tail and for the most part the full length body of your fly. You can do like one and a half shank lengths. Catch that. Get some good pressure on it. Just run up where you're going to tie your collar and catch it, run back to your tying point. And then when you cut this shaft, this one has, I don't know, not a lot to give, but just hang on to it. Hang on to that. It's important. Now I'm going to come in here and start a dubbing loop. So you're going to draw your thread out, catch it on your finger, bring it back. I've literally made a loop of line in my finger. Tie that down, throw your thread over the top to pinch it tight against the shaft. Make sure it's locked in nice and good back there. Run your thread up. Throw in some half hitches because I'm going to use my bobbin cradle here and my rotary function. So I carry this Stanfo dubbing twister in my shop and it's the bee's knees. This thing is sick. So I'm just going to hook that. Throw some wax on there because you're going to want a little bit of bite to this. I'm going to come in with flash boot dubbing. I love using this dark brown flash boot dubbing in my coffee stained tannic water. It's the best, especially paired with the pheasant skin. Now I kind of just have a wad. You're going to kind of pull and separate, pull and separate and make a long line of dubbing here. This is pretty tricky material handling, but practice and it'll make you a better tire. Get that in your thread and then just space it out accordingly. Of course, you want it a little bit thinnest, closest to the bend because you don't want a lot of buildup down there and it can get a little bit thicker up towards the eyes, which is going to be on my side of the loop here. Just so you can build a little bit of bulk. If you have trouble spacing it out, you can poke it apart with a bodkin. That'll significantly help you space it about, especially if it gets kind of trapped in your, in your wax a little bit. Now under tension, just going to quickly spin that. You don't want to overspin it or you'll kind of break it out. And then I'm going to pinch it and preen it off to a side, just like you would kind of treat a hackle here. Draw my thread out, throw it in the cradle. And I'm just going to walk this around. Now these don't have to be super tight turns. You can kind of just advance your thread. Call it open spiral wrapping. Now if you're fishing for bonier mouth fish than I am, I'm fishing for smallmouth. Uh, you know, I caught all 30 plus fish. Uh, why not? I want that a little bit farther up all 30 plus fish on the same fly uh, and that fly is still fishing. <laughs> so if you are fishing for say brown trout, you got a little bit more teeth in there, you can counter rib that. You can also take your mono thread and just run it down the body and run it back up and rib it with the mono. Uh, but I had no issues with the durability as far as just running that straight open loop with the mono, just like that. Now we're gonna come in and do a, a collar of hackles. Now. I'm going to use pheasant rump, so it's all this stuff. You're going to want one prime piece of rump, which is all the way here at the tip of the butt of the bird, and then one medium size, which is going to be in the middle of the rump there. Now, when you're fishing this in the current, if you're swinging it and you're stripping it, this creates the body, kind of the silhouette of the, the fly. But when you dead drift it, which if you watch my fishing video, all those monster smallmouth ate this thing on a dead drift, all of these legs pick way out. And remember, don't throw away your shafts. You need the shafts. But all of these hackles pick way out and make this half a bait fish pattern and half a bugger pattern. It's pretty interesting. On the dead drift, this thing bugs way out. Like these legs and everything are like, Bleh! and it looks like a sick little, probably a dragonfly nymph or big stonefly nymph or 
maybe crayfish legs. I, it's kind of hard to say what they think it is. Maybe a big Helgramite. Uh, the beauty of it is it could literally be all of them. <clears throat> so it's suggestive in nature on the dead drift. But when you're not dead drifting it, it's a bait fish. So I got both hackles tied in, preening both feathers off together, palmering both together, preening them back. It doesn't really matter if everything is super duper clean because when you catch it, we're going to tie. So can I get half a turn on there? Yeah. I did three full turns. So it's really buggy, really picky. Caught those, preen them back. Take your thread literally right over the stems. Break out the tips if you can find them. You can only find the long one, that's okay by me. And you see, I'm just kind of working this with my finger. I'm take my thread literally over most of that room and it's gonna help compress those a little bit so they're more of a silhouette function. And it's also gonna aid the durability. And like, look at that body draped over all that flash, like it's sweet. <clears throat> now, this is the coolest part of the fly. I've been trying to figure out how to finish this fly for like a year, <laughs> and uh, what's been interesting, I've been taking my shafts, and if you preen off the feathers, you get membrane from the shaft, and what's really irritating is in a loop that screws everything up, and you can't get a really clean, picky, buggy head. And because I'm only a streamer tire, I don't have any dubbing, like nice dubbing, like hair's ear dubbing. I just don't have any. So it's like, how am I supposed to finish this fly with dubbing when I don't have any dubbing and I don't want to buy any dubbing because I'm not going to use dubbing for anything but this fly. <laughs> so what I decided to do was cut the shaft waist, all of these marabou-like fibers, and make a marabou dubbing blended with the flash. And it makes a sick head that's really picky in the water, has a lot of life, has a little bit of resistance, nice three-dimensional silhouette. Like it's just clean and easy and you're using fibers that normally go to waste. So it's kind of the best of every situation. So you're making another loop here. Doesn't need to be super big, like a four inch loop. Close that loop off. Make sure you got that tied in nice and tight. Bring that thread forward. Half hitches right at the eye. Suck all that back up there. I got so much crap on my table. Come back in with your Stonfo loop twister. Now check this out. This is where the, the magic happens. I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to take all my waist stems and I'm just going to cut this so that you don't get the membrane. And I'm of course going to leave it on my table so it's not floating around all over the place. Be forewarned, this will make a mess, a big mess. But I should have three feathers. I have my marabou and I have my two hackles. So you have three feathers worth of waste here. And then I'm going to come in with just a pinch of flash. Just a pinch. So like this is all my, my stuff. See that? Just a pile of garbage. And you're just going to take that, squish it all together, preen it, rip it, pull it apart, get the flash blended and all these feathers, and then start separating it. So you kind of have a line of feathers here. Open up your loop. Get it in there. I can promise you that is not as easy as I made that look. You'll probably hate me for showing you that because it's not going to come together the first 10 times you try it. But there you go, uh, a marabou dubbing loop. Spin that up. Like I got one shaft in there that I don't like. So like you just cut that weird thing out. Lightly pick that out. Preen it back. and walk that sucker and look at this it makes a sick little head nothing but marabou dubbing a few turns on the back side bring them underneath the eye so that you fill in that kind of under eye gap a few turns on top a 
And then I like to catch it twice to make sure it's really tied on. Nope. Gonna have to throw a half hitch in before I let go. And then half hitch behind that eye so that your thread won't fall off the downturned eye there. That would be bad news. Hit that with some CA plus. If you got any glue out here, take your shaky caffeine infused coffee hands and pick that out. Just make sure you don't have a closed hook eye. You can kind of brush that head back. This one didn't come out perfect, but that's okay. The one from the one minute version has a little bit beefier head that I kind of like. Sometimes the Marabou, when you're going around in the loop, you just have a weird bald spot and it ended up being on top. So I don't have as much fiber up here as I'd like, but in the water, you won't know the difference and it won't matter. <laughs> so that is the bug, literally a pheasant skin and some flashaboo dubbing. You're good to go. Marabou hackles, custom health do it yourself Marabou dubbing to finish off the head over medium bead chain. Um, Dead drift it, strip it, swing it. It's kind of an end all, be all, dark, natural, subtle, low and clear, bait fish perfection. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Tie some up, check out the fishing video. You can find all the materials in the shop if you need them. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next one. See you guys.